Hello, folks. Welcome to the BMI Baby Elite Ice Hockey League here on Sky Sports for the Hall Stingrays against the Newcastle Vipers. Well, welcome to Hall Arena for the Northeastern battle between two teams desperate for two points. I'm Dick Rothwell alongside of me, as usual, Dave Sims. Dave, how you doing, buddy? I'm very well. I'm a little bit cold. I'm looking forward to a different kind of game tonight, Nick. You yourself have said that it's two desperate teams playing for the two points. These teams can't buy a win between them. And uh, I think we're going to see a very desperate game tonight. Two desperate teams playing very desperate hockey. And it's so important that run up to the Christmas run to, to put a couple of points up on the board to get to the morale going the team confidence for two teams out here who it seems like the confidence has been a bit low lately. I think confidence is a huge point that you make and, and certainly as far as the whole Stingrays are concerned, they're going to start thinking playoffs, you know. I think the Edinburgh Capitals, you can kind of wave goodbye to them at the bottom of the table, but Basingstoke have started to win again, a win against Sheffield on Sunday, and the whole Stingrays need to win some games to get into that eighth position, which means postseason play and for the Stingrays, an eighth place finish postseason would be a good sign for them. And the Hall Stingrays have had a few people depart the, their, their lineup lately as well. well you know, one of our favourites. One of our favourites, Paul Cabana. He could have waited another week, yeah. couldn't he? <laughs> um, but he had the chance to go to Germany. A surprise move. He's gone to a team that's only won three games in 26. Uh, and he hasn't got a contract there. He's gone on a trial basis, but I think he just felt the time was right to leave here. And that's left a big hole in their lineup because Cabana made things happen for the Stingrays. He created things, and that's yep. something that Rick yep. Strachan hasn't had an awful lot of. All right, Dave, well, we can look now at the weekend's results from last weekend, of course. Week 14, and there you can see Belfast beating Edinburgh, Coventry blanking Manchester. Sheffield with a big win over tonight's visitors, Newcastle. And then uh, I suppose on Sunday, that the big one there is that Hall did manage to, to squeak a, a, a very, very brave and spirited win down in Cardiff. A great win for the Hall Stingrays. Cardiff, of course, without Phil O'Sare in goal, and I think that was a big reason maybe of that victory. But they'd have got back to the dressing room more pumped that they'd won, only to find that Basingstoke had beaten Sheffield. Yeah. That's a big rivalry now, Hall and Basingstoke, for that eighth place. Okay, we can have a look at the league table right now. Again, as of week 14, Coventry still on top with the 41 points, but those uh, it's those four games in hand. Always. Yeah. Said, you know, we go back six weeks to that game in Coventry we did. Those uh, those games in hand are important. But look at the bottom. Manchester, Basin, Stoke and Hull, they're all competing for that final, you know, playoff yep. spot. Yep. Dave, the big story, I, I suppose, here is Newcastle sliding down the t table. They haven't won, I think, what, two two wins in the last 11, and then Hull with a one win in nine, and, and, and both these teams desperate for a win. And you know what? The first of those two wins was against the Coventry Blades in Coventry that took them to the top of the BMI Baby yeah. Elite League. Yeah. Then they lost the following night in Sheffield. They've beaten Edinburgh since then. Other than that, they haven't what won, and they don't look like winning. Yeah, That's what, the thing. What a difference four weeks can make. Yeah. Anyway, well, Dave, you caught up with both head coaches earlier on, Rob Wilson and Rick Strack. Rob, the Newcastle Vipers need a win. Hopefully tonight you can do that. Yeah, you know, we're desperate for a win. You know, we've been struggling at late, and, uh, but this is what happens sometimes. You know, you go through patches during the season, and right now we're in our bad patch. Let's hope it ends tonight and we can get back on track. What's gone wrong? Because only four weeks ago you were top of the league. You know, you know what? It happens. I, I, I think, you know, maybe at some times we're maybe overachieving a bit this year. Um, but, uh, you know, we're winning games. I think we were playing with a lot of confidence. I think our confidence has been knocked, and it's really hard to get it back. We've ran into a few injuries, but I don't like to make that as an excuse. And, and then, you know, like I said, I think the main thing is confidence right now. You're looking for a player to step up to the plate tonight. Who should we keep an eye out for? Well, obviously, you, you know, when you're down, you need, like, your captain to be a big leader and, and, uh, and come up with a big game. So I'm hoping David will play well. I'll be honest, we need a team performance. We can't have one guy stepping up tonight. We need a whole team performance to come out from Mac right out of the nets there, all the way through the whole team. And, uh, and you know, like, especially when you're short, guys, you need every guy that's available to step up to the plate. And tonight, hopefully they do. Strax, it's been a tough time, but you must have been thrilled with a great win on Sunday. Yeah, you know, everything that's happened to us, injuries, guys quitting, you know, the guys pulled together and, 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 they, and they wouldn't be denied and they went out there and they played a great game and great goaltending and every guy who stepped on the ice gave it everything he had. You must love the cameras coming in here. Two wins and an overtime loss in your three TV games. If only we could follow you around. Yeah, you know what? Uh, I know for some reason uh, when, when, when uh, Sky shows up, uh, the boys play their very best and, uh, you know, tonight we're going to need the very best from every one of them to be successful. I've uh, told the guys in the truck to look out for Ladislav Kujina as the player to watch. He has to be your best player tonight, does he not? 
yeah, you know what, uh, you know, with, uh, you know, all the injuries and the D missing and, you know, uh, a lot of young guys out there, he's going to have to cover up for any mistakes made. And, you know, it's a game of hockey to be lots of mistakes made. So if he's on his game, we're, st we're in it all the way. And lad, again, any injury news on him? I know he skated this morning. Will we see him in the Stingrays lineup tonight? Yeah, he's, uh, he, he skated. He's going to take warm up and uh, he wants to play and we'll, we'll, we'll keep an eye on him throughout the game. But if he's got a little twinge in his back, we're going to have to pull him out. But other than that, he's going to start and we'll see where we go from there. Okay, best of luck. Thank you. Dave, as you mentioned, uh, once to watch Ladislav Kujana. He's been outstanding the, t the times that we've seen him so far this season. Every time we've seen him, he's been absolutely fantastic, and that's why the Stingrays have done well on the TV. The problem is he doesn't play too well when we're not watching him. <laughs> um, and if Kujana plays well, the Stingrays have a chance to win. If Kujana isn't the best player on the ice, not the best player for Hall, the best player on the ice tonight, the Stingrays won't win this game. Yeah, Simple and, as that. And for uh, Newcastle, we, we know it is a team team game, and uh, but you did say it would uh, take some guy to step up and lobby can do it this man can be anything he wants to be the thing is does he want to be that good and david longstaff has more skill more ability than pretty much any other player in the league if he wants to give it all and if he wants to show it tonight he's one of his best mates rob wilson needs him his teammates need him and we need to see an outstanding performance from david longstaff i know he can do it i rate him as high as any player in this league and david longstaff has to roll the sleeves up tonight yep. get dirty and come out on top for the vikings and now he knows what a magic whistle is too now he knows what a magic whistle is yeah <laughs> are we going to give that one out now or are we going to save uh, that, that for another that'll be show? a story for you guys later on another it was show. Pretty, pretty funny story yeah. but uh all right dave so quick predictions then I think David Longstaff's going to come to the party tonight. I think the Newcastle Vipers will not accept losing. I think the Vipers to win this one by maybe just one goal. Okay, what do you think? What do you think I would say? I think you'd say, well, I don't really know, and I'll leave it to you, Dave. All right, Dave. Well, we're going to get up to our commentary position. But coming up after the break, the first period between the Northeastern Derby, between the Hall Stingrays and the Newcastle Vipers. Don't go anywhere, folks. Well, welcome back, folks. We're in Hall for the Hall Stingrays taking on the Newcastle Vipers. First period just about to get underway, and Dave, here are the teams. Well, Ryan McDonald has had to be so important for the Newcastle Vipers, no more so than this evening. Story, Thornton, Goulet, and Gomanyuk. Young Richie Thornton, of course, taking the place of Kratzky whilst up front. Who's going to score the goals? Rob Wilson will be delighted that Todd Jackson is back in the lineup. His partnership with Colin Shields has been very successful this year. Our one to watch, though, was David Longstaff. Lovey has to come to the party. As you mentioned, Jackson back in the lineup. We're not sure how healthy he is, but he's in between Campbell and Shields with Goulet and Story on the points. And McDonald in goal. How many times have we said it, Nick? But Ladislav Kujina doesn't have to be the best player for the Stingrays tonight. He has to be the best player on the ice tonight if the whole Stingrays are going to be successful. Luke Boothroy. Thorma as well. They've got a big job ahead of them. Who's going to score the goals? Riddle is back in the lineup, but there's no Cabana. Marlon Joseph, the first time where the Sky Cameras have been on him this season. And Hull will be starting with Gloy in between Mitchell and Rankin. Boothroyd and Toma on the points. And Kujana guarding the 2 4. So here we go, folks. We're all ready to go. Our referee tonight is Andy Carson. And I new think he's addition, had a yeah, new addition to the Carson family. We want to say congratulations to, to Andy and the young uh, young uh, Holly two weeks ago. So we're off. Now, what's this game going to be like? Is it going to be at between, between these two desperate teams just looking to do anything just to get a win? Is it going to be dirty, scruffy? Or actually, are we going to be surprised and these two teams are going to open up and we're going to see a hat full of goals? Only time will tell. And it's early put possession for the Hall Stingrays, battling down low. Jackson comes in, gets a high stick actually, just under the chin from Patterson. Just out of the sight of the referee, Andy Carson. And the Vipers chipped to Ladigan. Keep an eye on Ladigan as well tonight, folks. Had a back problem, missed the weekend. Now back in the lineup for the uh, Stingrays. So important he plays as well. They'd have only been down to three defencemen if he hadn't have uh, placed, played. Only skated as well this morning for the first time in a week. Longstaff picks up on a loose pass from Riddle. Richie Thornton, a lot of pressure on him, playing as a number four defenseman for the Newcastle Vipers. That since Kratzky uh, disappeared, or was removed from his job by coach Rob Wilson. Here's Gomenyuk, pass down the middle to Hutchins, to David Longstaff, Payette makes a move to the net. Hutchins gets it back off Longstaff. Puck out in front, Longstaff couldn't quite get there. Kudjana dives, but Mitchell collects. 
and our first penalty of the night is going to go the way of the Hall Stingrays. We're going to have an interference call going against Luke Boothroyd. You can see, and that all stems from, from Newcastle doing a great job with their breakout, keeping things nice and simple, and I think that's what both coaches are going to want their teams to do, eliminate any kind of chances for mistakes. Let's play good basic hockey. Face off with uh, Andre Payet still against Glower. Longstaff gets it back to Story. Story and Goulet working the uh, blue line. Quick puck movement. Shot comes in from Story. Got deflected and scores. Early goal for the Newcastle Vipers. I thought that might have been deflected off David Phillips' stick. I, of, I, the, uh, of the whole Stingrays, Andre Payet puts his hand in the air. Uh, yeah, I think Andre Payet, I think that's a great call by Rob Wilson to leave Andre on the power play there. Um, his line did a good job in drawing the penalty, puts Payet in front of the net. You see the puck, puck come in, Payet right on the doorstep. H hard to tell on the on the replay, but I'm sure Payet got, he just, he just deflected it up high over Kujina there. Uh, a great goal by the Newcastle Vipers, good start. Just the start that Andre Payet would want, and... Uh, if Andre Payet's happy and just playing on top of his game, what a different player he is, Nick. And uh, getting an early goal, you yourself, you just spoke about confidence for both of these teams. Well, the Newcastle Vipers now have a tad of confidence. Rublivsky, blind pass, out to Thornton, who chips in. Ben Campbell out there, he runs into Kudjan of the goalie, but it's the uh, Stingrays that burst down the right-hand side. Knight skates well, takes a shot off the blocker. First chance we see of number five. Marlene Joseph, only recently signed for the Hall Stingrays. Puck chipped in, though. Kujina just sticks it out of the way. Ben Campbell will get there on his backhand. Gets it back out to Rublivsky. Whistle blows. And the net is off its mooring. Hockey is a game of puck possession. To get the puck, you've got to win some face-offs. Glower and Payette in the face-off circle. Face-off win there for Payette, who breaks his stick, makes his way back to the bench. Gets a uh, hit on Thoma without a stick, now comes back for his stick, and while he's doing that, Glower has the loose puck, takes a shot right into the body of McDonald, second bite of the cherry for the whole Stingrays, but again the Vipers get there first. Outlet pass goes the way to Longstaff, who hits the red line and just chips in behind Kujina's goal. He runs over Boothroyd as well, and this line has got a lot of, a lot of physical presence and size with Longstaff, but here's it down the other end in ranking, he'll take a long shot, Mitchell drove the net, Thoma keeps the puck in. Mitchell goes to collect. He didn't know if he was going to be offside or not. Rankin dives on that loose puck. Payet comes and finishes. And you can tell Andre Payet has scored that early goal and got a bit of confidence because he's on his toes and he's, he's banging around. Shot's going to come wide. And the Vipers collect with Hutchins, who takes a late hit. Rublitsky gets knocked off the puck by Phillips, and the loose puck finds its way to Ladd again. Outlet pass down the left-hand side. Glow is going to chip into the opposite corner, where Elders will collect. Sean Johnson just gets caught in the corner with the loose puck. Elders does a pretty good job. Goulet comes in as well. Vipers will have a chance to clear, and Ben Campbell does a good job. Marlin on the backhand side, Marlin Joseph that is, Ladigan chips into the corner, Elders goes to get it, he's going to be met by uh, Richie Thornton, and Story chips out, only as far as Johnson, Hart Johnson headmans the puck over the blue line, takes his man wide, shot from the outside, blocked away, Newcastle looking on their game, they're on the toes, they're uh, first to the loose box at the moment as Phillips tries to move Rublivsky. Campbell tries to get the cycle going, Goulet helps it on its way, Rublivsky couldn't get there. Joseph gets to that puck, can't clear the zone. Here's Joseph again, he's got to be firmer on the puck, he's got to move Rublivsky out of the way. Joseph has the weight advantage and he's getting knocked off the puck by Rublivsky. Rublivsky gets a shot on goal, again knocked into the corner. Backhand pass by Joseph, finally gets it to uh, Knight who chips in and the Stingrays will take that opportunity for a change. First five minutes all Newcastle, they've come in here looking really, really relaxed and uh, they came to this arena, I'll tell you a little bit, uh, in, in a little bit more of a different manner than they normally do. They do, we'll it tell might, that story. It might just make them look a little bit more relaxed. Brett Hatterson shoots the puck right down the belly button. They've done a great job of keeping all the scoring opportunities for the Hall Stingrays on the outside. They're forcing Hall to dump the puck, and they're keeping Hall to those outside scoring opportunities. You can see McDonald will save those all night. But the way that Newcastle actually got here, they didn't come by a coach. They, they all actually drove down 
uh, in, in pairs and, and quads in, in, in cars. Might just take a little bit of a, a you know a more relaxed approach to get into a game. They did that a couple of seasons ago. It ended up winning them a playoff championship. It's, uh, it's a different way in Newcastle at times. Five uh, minute mark just gone in this first period. Andre Payet's opening goal. The difference between the two teams right now. Hutchins gets it out to Longstaff. And Rob Wilson will be looking at Jeff Hutchins, who's played injured for the last three or four weeks, and uh, will go in for surgery on the 20th of December. Stand-up play by Gomanyuk, who chips to the neutral zone, where it's collected by Thormer. He's passed to Kulikov, quick hands Kulikov, but quick hands poor pass, and doesn't find his intended target. Payet picks up on a loose puck. A lot of pressure on some of these British defencemen tonight. Richie Thornton there, wearing 10 for the Vipers. And, of course, nice pass for uh, Gominyuk out to Hutchins. And, of course, we've talked about Boothroyd and Phillips every time the Stingrays have had the cameras on them, and they've never let them down. Shields tries to pull a move on Patterson, doesn't do so. Outlet pass by Patterson. Finds Kulikov in his uh, third spell with the whole Stingrays. Kulikov again. Back out to Thormer, but Campbell was all over him. Campbell with speed, and Campbell has got Shields the other side. Campbell, go over to Shields, and Shields was driving the net. Couldn't make it count. Jackson gets it back to Shields, who everybody just let go. Derek Campbell. And Campbell, Shields, and Jackson, they do bring some speed. Nice pass out to Goulet. Goulet gets one on Kujina, and eventually it's Ladigan who gets it out to Mitchell. And you know what? They might be short of a few bodies, but they have got some good speed on this big line here. And you know they're going to uh, they're going to give in a full 60-minute performance. You know Rick Strachan's team never give up. Phillips long pass to the red line, helped on its way. Glow will get to the corner, but Goulet will get there first. Rublitsky chips out, and when Phillips touches the puck, we're going to have an icing. You know. It will be interesting to see who brings that intensity, Nick. You know, both teams struggling with confidence. And tonight, I'm sure both teams will take a scrappy victory over a good performance. It's not about the performance tonight. It's only about the result. So important, of course, for the Stingrays. If they could pick two points up at home, they're desperate to, uh, you know, get into that top eight, which will see them in the postseason competition in the end of season playoffs. It's a short series of games and any team then can make it to the final four and once you're there any team can win it and, and of course four weeks ago Newcastle were top of the league so you know they want to get a win tonight to, to try and get their league run back on track Thornton has got Joseph come and finish him but Joseph had the chance there to hammer Thornton and he declined from doing so new kid on the block of course uh, Marlin Joseph only playing his fourth game for the Stingrays tonight I just do wonder how many more we will play for them. Chipped uh, through by Gomanyuk. Well, you got to make an impression quick in this league. You have to, and I don't think he has. Here's Gomanyuk from the outside, takes a shot, ends up in Kujina's glove. Whistle blows. <laughs> you, you always find out when you get to the rink and if they put a name out on your jersey or not. So yeah. uh, when, 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 when they make the expense of actually putting the name on your jersey, then you know you got a few more games anyway. You wouldn't want to fire Dave Chatelet after just two weeks, would you? You spent all that money on his name across the back, and then... Well, and look what they did. They, did. <laughs> they, they tried it. Payet in the circle. Good face-off win by Andre Payet. Payet's on his game, and when he's on his game, he's fun to see. Nice work from Hutchins, who's, I think we've mentioned before, has been the top scorer in his two previous teams, Coventry and Belfast. But he's played hurt for a lot of the year here in, Hutch in uh, Newcastle, and I don't think the Vipers fans have seen the best of him. But one of the sharpshooters in the league. Longstaff just ahead of Hutchins, and Hutchins just moves the puck out to the outside. Longstaff chips it into the opposite corner where Payet will go to collect. Payet looked at the option of coming back to Story on the blue line, decided to get the cycle going. Here's Longstaff. Heads up play by Longstaff. Protects the puck well, but just loses out there to Phillips. It's in Longstaff's skates, and he gets it back to Goulet. Hutchins has got so much space, if they can find him, Hutchins shoots. Denied by Kudjina. Then the Vipers come all on top of Kudjina. Glower looks at Andy Carson for a penalty, but David Longstaff and Jeff Hutchins, they had no option but to uh, 
to put pressure on Kujanet because Kujanet made the save, but then I don't think he knew where he was. Yeah, Hutchins driving to the net there. He was left all alone, and Kujanet made a great save. The puck pops out. But look at the space Hutchins had, Nick. He just, yeah, no one touched him on the back check there, and that's what Rick Strachan will want his guys to do. Look, guys, I don't mind if you give up a great goal, but uh, make sure you get your markers and get goal sides of guys. So many teams now having to do that, aren't they? Going with four defensemen. Only eight defensemen on show here tonight. Four for the Vipers, four for the Stingrays. But most of them, they've got three lines of forwards out. So those forwards are going to come hard at the D. And surely both teams will be trying to put the opposition's defence under pressure, knowing that there is only four of them. Will that happen tonight? Will the puck get chipped in and then, you know, the old dump and chase? Not dump and watch. Story heads up, tries to find Sean Johnson. Johnson's got it, but he has to come back. Only as far as Goulet. Goulet hits the red line, chips with the backhand. Doesn't get it all the way. And here is Joseph. Top of the circle, takes a shot at the eight iron out. Just went over the top corner there. Joseph's a big man and he comes with a reputation of, uh, of being a physical player. But right now, there wouldn't be a chance he'd break an egg in his pocket. He's uh, not keen on the old body checks. And he comes with a reputation of ten major penalties uh, last season. Ison will be waved off. Thornton will collect. Hull looking for that stretch pass. And do you remember the first time yeah, we came here? You know, six, seven weeks ago that pass would have been made. Andre Payet, good work by Andre Payet. He's going to find Thornton who takes a shot. Delayed penalty when Hull touch, Hull do touch. And the penalty against the Stingrays. It's a hooking minor. And it comes at 11 minutes and 12 seconds. Second power play of the night for the Newcastle Vipers as Patterson makes his way to the penalty box. Newcastle Vipers second power play of this game with the Stingrays. It took them, what, a handful of seconds of the first power play to score their uh, goal. So they're one for one on special teams right now. Story battling down there, so is David Longstaff. But the Stingrays break, one on one play. It's Riddle, Phillips is trying to make up some space, but Riddle takes a shot right into the glove of McDonald. He drops it for Story, Longstaff to his left hand side. But he's going to go instead to Jackson. Jackson looks for Longstaff. Longstaff with a bit of time, puts the brakes on, gets it back to Story. And the first power play, they got it to the blue line and got quick puck movement between Goulet and Story. They can't get that good puck possession at the moment. And Stingray's clear. 40 seconds gone in the one-man advantage. Shields collects. Story brings the puck, he carries the puck, he's going to take a long shot, he does, right into the glove of Kujana. He just drops it for Thorma, but Thorma can't clear. Thorma only got it back to uh, Payet. Jackson, Story's waiting for it, Longstaff has it in the office, gives it now to uh, Jackson, Payet collects, it's got to come back to Story. Doesn't come back to Story, Payet runs into Story. Payet's now looking for it, and he takes a one-time and gets kicked away by Kujana, as Longstaff got some traffic in front of the Stingrays goalie. 45 seconds left as both teams will take that opportunity for a change. Yeah, both uh, the special teams uh, t out there and and needing that dump so they could uh, get a fresh fresh set of legs out on the ice. Special teams, they say, win championships, but special teams win games and make playoffs in the uh, case of the whole Stingrays. Top eight of the ten BMI Baby Elite League teams make the postseason. Colleen Shields gets it out to Hutchins. Hutchins with a rim. Goes behind the goal of Kujina where it's collected by Campbell. Phillips forces Campbell. Campbell still on the puck. Newcastle just trying to move the puck quickly as the Stingrays come back to full strength. The final shot is blocked. Campbell gets forced into the corner by Lanigan. No penalty called. Rublitsky gets a late hit from Rankin. Glower chips, does he get it all the way out? No, he doesn't. Shields comes for a change, and Vipers trying to hold on to the play. A bit of a high stick there into Phillips, and uh, Phillips and Campbell, they're hacking and chopping with one another. Shot's going to come from the outside, it came from Gomenyuk, and now Patterson will have time to break. Gets it out to Glower. Glower's all alone because everybody's gone for a change. Gomenyuk, quick hands, Rublivsky has got Campbell driving to the net, that's young Ben Campbell. And Rublivsky and Ben Campbell, together with Sean Johnson, make up the third unit for the Newcastle Vipers. Here comes Joseph again. Everybody's gone for a change. This time Joseph goes low at the three iron out this time. 
Lee Mitchell. The five born youngster. Combines with Thoma. But they're being held and just pressured in their own defensive zone. Longstaff tries to step inside. Back to Thornton who rims around to Payette who's gone and sag low. Longstaff and Payette, they're two bruising players who protect the puck so well and keep hold of it. Didn't protect it too well then. Here we go again, third bite of the cherry for Joseph, offside. And took the shot as well. And uh, Payette, Joseph and <laughs> Hutchins all skate after uh, Joseph. Just to say that's not done, Sunshine. Watch the whole Stingrays this year. They got battered by Nottingham and won the game. Got battered in Cardiff, what did they do? Win the game. And they took Belfast to overtime as well. So they're a team that can soak up the pressure and come back and hit you with on the counter attack. And they can score some goals. Never underestimate Rick Strachan's boys. Campbell's got uh, Rublift, sorry, Jackson driving the net. Intercepted though. Here comes Patterson with speed. He's got Kulikov. Kulikov almost ran into his teammate there. And Patterson kicks it back out, only as far as Riddle. Riddle's got Jackson all over him. Kulikov joins in. Slava Kulikov. Here's Kulikov. Here's a great chance for Riddle. Riddle's going to take a shot just wide. Goulet collects, chips out as far as Campbell. And now Colin Shields on his own as the uh, Vipers take a change. Intercepted Lanigan. Lanigan down the left hand side. Has got Glower ahead of him. Lanigan with an absolute hammer. He's never going to beat uh, McDonald from there. Perhaps would have been better just to try and force a puck to Glower. Riddle can't get it in. Intercepted Gomenyuk. Nice feed from uh, Gomenyuk out to Rublivsky, who shoots high. Bouncing puck. Johnson takes a shot. Glower collects. Just bounced awkwardly off the glass here. Riddle waits on the play. And Riddle is uh, slow and has put Ladigan under pressure. So Ladigan gives him back and in comes Sean Johnson. And you know what? Too much of the game is being played in that end of the rink at the moment, even by Hull. They're trying to they're well, trying to skate it out and play it out, and they're in trouble there. Two competitors there, Glower and Payette. Two very different kind of players, but neither of them give an inch. Story, lovely move inside. Still Story, can he get it out to Payette? No, keeps it himself, takes a shot. Payette, two bites of the cherry, and a penalty's going to come in on the way of the whole Stingrays. What a lovely move by uh, Ben Story. Yeah, you don't expect uh, your defenseman to step in and make nice moves like that. Uh, uh, an outside in move and, and Gloa having to hook him. Otherwise, it would have been a clear, clear scoring opportunity. Look at that move. And Glow is back, one hand on his stick, and he gets it about around that glove area and uh, causes Story to bubble the puck. And again, with the, uh, the zero tolerance, that is a two-minute minor. Payet had a great chance there on the back door as well. Face-off win as well. Back to Longstaff, to Story. Story to Shields. Story wants it back. He gets it back. Quick hands to Longstaff. Longstaff, quick hands as well. Payet's out in front. Quickly ranking comes to him. The story takes a shot, absolute bullet. And Andre Payet was stood right in front of Kudjana. He doesn't mind taking a, uh, a shot on the ankle if it helps his team. Kudjana just tries to chip only as far as Jackson. Ranking helps it on its way. And Lee Mitchell chips into the disco lights here. Yeah, it's like the old it's disco lights going. The disco lights. I bet you have one of those disco lights in your house, don't you? I got one over my bed. <laughs> anyway, uh, you know, Jeff Glower, like I said, taking that uh, that two minute minor, Rick Strack, and, and the guys uh, killing penalties. But I think Jeff Glower is probably sitting in, in that penalty box over there thinking, oh, at least uh, I can maybe get a bit of a rest here. Well, they're tired penalties. You've said it yourself. Yeah. Every penalty the Stingrays have taken right now have been tired penalties. Every club's played a lot of hockey, though. That can't be an excuse for Hull, Newcastle or anybody. Every club's played a lot of hockey, but the Hull Stingrays have played a lot of hockey short-handed. I don't think there's a, a, what I'm saying is an excuse, but there is a reality to it too, Dave. Oh, without a shadow. Story, Longstaff. David Longstaff looks on the game, on the money. Longstaff, quick hands. Gets it out to Shields, takes a shot, right on Payette. And Dave Phillips hammers all the way down as the power play ticks down. We've had 55 seconds of one-man advantage for the Newcastle Vipers. This is their third power play. They're one for two. Gorgeous hands, Longstaff. Headman's the puck. Feeds it to Payet. Payet takes a shot. Did that hit the crossbar? I think he did. He went through Kudjana and hit the crossbar from David Longstaff and Payet, combining a game well. 
Ladigan gets to it, swings his stick at it, and hammers all the way down. I, I think some of the Newcastle guys are thinking that that went in, because it cut it, it made that noise like it hit, it pad, it hit, hit padding. Campbell chips, Patterson collects. 33 seconds left on the power play. And Payette's almost at his second of the night. I'm sure we'll get a replay of that shortly. Here's Thornton. Gomin Yokwansi, but he's going to come to Campbell perhaps. As he chips into the corner, Campbell's got to go and get there. Kudjana gets there. 18 seconds on the power play as Thorma with a backhand, high backhand out. Gomin Yok collects. And at the moment, it's all Newcastle, but you look at the scoreboard and it's still only that one goal. And my mind goes back to Cardiff when we saw the Devils put about 55 shots on the Stingrays and come out on the losing side. Campbell, nice pass on the outside. Thornton takes a shot from the outside as well. Rublivsky, who of course used to play in Hull. Gominyuk takes a long shot. Rebounds high off the glass. It's heavy glass here, heavy glass. A wall back there. It is. You don't want to take a big hit into those boards, do you? Rublivsky to Hutchins. Hutchins through traffic right into the glove of Kudjana. And Rublivsky gets moved by Ladigan. So the whole Stingrays, just 20 seconds left then in this first period. And actually, I think Rick Strachan will be quite happy with the score. Because um, the Newcastle Vipers, they've had their opportunities in this period. Three power plays. The Stingrays have killed well. Just that first power play goal. Four seconds, three seconds uh, left on the clock. Andre Payet in the face-off circle as the period ends. And Andre Payet was the man of the period. Number nine, Andre Payet, the goal scorer. Rob Wilson will be happy as he walks back to his dressing room. But that power play goal for the Newcastle Vipers means that it's the Newcastle Vipers that lead the whole Stingrays by a single goal to nil. We'll be back with the second period. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. Second period of BMI Baby Elite League action here on Sky Sports. Let's take a look at that shot that was at the end of the period. Lovely play by Longstaff. Look at that move. And Nicky got it to Payette and Payette shot. Payette fires it. Boom, off the top of the crossbar. But didn't it sound like the thud of padding inside the arena? We just wanted to show you here. It definitely went off the crossbar. The officials got it right. Vipers in their black uniform on the road here in the hall. The Stingrays wearing their traditional white uniform at home. And Derek Campbell collects. Gets it to Story. Story had a lovely move and a good scoring opportunity himself in that first period. Long outlet pass looking for Kulikov. Uh, Marco Conan, the linesman, just waves that off. Kulikov collects, backhand pass looking for Patterson. Riddle goes to join the party, but Campbell with a long chip pass, and uh, Ladigan had to be had to be solid, had to make sure he uh, he made connection with the puck there. Otherwise, the right winger would have been off. That right winger was Shields. Ladigan chips into the neutral zone. Here's Patterson. Yeah, de defenseman pinching up into the neutral zone to intercept passes. They got to make you got to make sure you intercept it. Otherwise, it's but a two-on-zero, yeah. and uh, quickly go and hide from your goalie. Well, luckily, Campbell. Uh, Jackson with speed pass, takes a shot into uh, Ladigan, and Ladigan covers up pretty quickly, and uh, I don't know if he needs to do that. He does like to cover up and, and put his glove right on it. Kudjana, Ladigan, <laughs> Kudjana. But Kudjana, but you know what? There's no need here. No. Move the puck. Get it to your defenseman. Well, you know what, Dave? Because what he's done now is put his team in yeah, trouble. He, because he has, he's got if, he, if he looks up and he sees a guy barreling in uh, behind his defenseman, he's going to cover up just to, so he doesn't want to take any chance, especially early on in the period. I think he had enough time, and there's a goalie perhaps not playing with a lot of confidence, because I think a goalie with confidence moves that puck quickly and doesn't then risk the face-off in the offensive zone and, and trouble that can follow. Here's Payette talking to trouble. Longstaff, nice pass to Hutchins, hits the blue line, top of the circle, he's forced wide, takes a shot into Kudjana's body. Rebound comes up as Longstaff finishes. Nice work by Thornton. Thornton's done a... Uh, I think a top job. Richie Thornton playing as a number four defenseman for the Newcastle Vipers. Gominyuk hammers Mitchell. Goes down to McDonald. 
collected by Thornton, and then the uh, long pass. Icing will be called when Phillips collects. You know, Dave, you were talking about Kujina uh, uh, hopping on the puck right there, and then he just took a couple of shots earlier on. And, and you remember a couple of games ago, the, the Challenge Cup semifinal in, in Cardiff, when we were saying, oh, Sarah wasn't popping up quickly, and it turned out that he was carrying an injury. Kujina isn't popping up like we have seen him. And I, I know he faced over 45 shots on Sunday, but he might be having a little bit of a tweak somewhere. Doesn't look, like, doesn't look like a goalie who's playing with any confidence at the moment. He's fighting the puck a little bit, isn't he? Is he hurt? Is he just not confident? Yeah. Who knows? Here's Longstaff. Nice pass by Longstaff. Tries to get Gominyuk going. Knight chips into the uh, middle. I'm sure he's feeling pretty good coming off of that big win in, 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 in Cardiff. Cardiff. But like that's why I say. You, you, you face that many shots and he may have just tweaked the muscle somewhere. Longstaff pulls an inside out move there and Phillips was uh, beating all ends up. Here's Longstaff again. Patience on the puck. And knowing Rick's track is lucky is hers. <laughs> Let's hope he's not. If it wasn't for bad luck, Rick Strachan wouldn't be having any luck at all. Phillips collects. Chips out. Joseph's got to get there first. And he does, for once, get there first. And chips to the neutral zone. Rublivsky. To Story. Heads up play. He skates very well, Ben Story. Look at that. Lovely move. Inside, outside. Hits a blue line. Patience. He's got Rublivsky going to the net. And Rublivsky just couldn't get his uh, stick on it. Rublivsky again, chance for Rublivsky. Oh, that was a great opportunity. Gurlett hammers around the board. Ben Campbell holds the stick of night in the air. Johnson comes, pounces. Johnson does a nice job on uh, Phillips. Still Johnson. Phillips can't touch him because if he does, it's a penalty. Oh, there's an interference call. Interference there. Players just yeah. ran into one another. And we'll have to have a look at that again. But Johnson held onto the puck, took it down by the boards. And then a collision of heads. Well, story, well, I'm sure we'll see it, uh, was pinching in. And I think uh, the refs either going to call a high stick or, or an interference call, or did they run into each other? But a stick did get high. Johnson working it out high on the wall. and uh, Oh, it's Johnson's, Johnson's stick. stick. But um, the referee actually got his. I think Hull there have got, the bad, have got a bad one there. Glad story's not hurt. That's the main thing, I suppose. That could have been very nasty, couldn't it? Catch that in the throat or in the eye. It's really, really painful. Just down below us then. Power play time for the Newcastle Vipers with Jackson. Longstaff. They'll move the puck quickly to Payette. Payette can't quite get enough stick on it. And uh, Patterson forces and forces well. Here's Story. He was the player who just took that high stick. But I think he took it off his own player. What you have to do for the team. Longstaff. Heads up play by Longstaff. Payette only gets it back. And Patterson has had a great shift. Not once but twice clearing. But again, you know, he, he, he chips a puck down the ice and he needs to come off for a change. Whereas earlier on in the season with a, a guy with that much jump, he would have been down there chasing that puck. Colin Shields hits the blue line, chips in. Can Payet get there first or will Ladigan get there first? It was Ladigan, but he can't quite clear. Shields back to Payet. Payet to Shields, quick hands. In a confined space, Ladigan has got Jackson covered. Chance for Riddle, but Riddle's just forcing the puck, yes, and forces the puck all the way out. Rob Wilson waves his hand, calling his players in. Line change as Rublitsky, Hutchins and Campbell go out on the power play. 46 seconds left on the one-man advantage for the Newcastle Vipers. Chance short-handed, oh. Mitchell shoots, oh. second bite of the cherry, Mitchell. Oh, he'll be disappointed he didn't score, it's Phillips. Oh, he pulls oh. it in instead of just shooting it. And now his team are in trouble. Shield, intercept, Glower. Now Rublivsky. But a couple of guilt edge chances, short-handed for the whole Stingrays. Goulet. Out to Campbell. Campbell backhand, gorgeous move, Campbell. And I think Kudjan had just got his uh, pad to it. Here's still Campbell. 15 seconds on the one-man advantage, Gomenyuk. When he go through traffic, he goes instead to Hutchins. Here's Goulet. It's not quick puck movement now. There's no movement. They've got to skate. And they do with Campbell. Campbell's got Mitchell hanging off him. Power play is over now for the Newcastle Vipers. Stingray's back to full strength. Here's Rublivsky. Backhand pass to the point. Point shot's going to come through traffic. Hutchins at the back door. Doesn't find him. Gets to Rublivsky instead. Rublitsky pulls too many moves and uh, confused Campbell, so the Stingrays just clear into neutralised territory. Mitchell again. 
Mitchell's been out there an awful long time. Here's Kulikov, Slava Kulikov. Still Kulikov. I remember his father playing. You ever see his father, Nick? What a great player he was, up in Fife. Yeah. When he first arrived. Played against them. Did you? Yeah. Here's Mitchell again, takes another shot. And again, where did you play against when, him? When I was in Guildford, he was about 40 odd years old. Oh. Do you know what? <laughs> he, he still took yeah. our team apart. Let's but, see this uh, replay, short handed chance. Yeah, you Story know, just misses out there. Great opportunity right in front for, for Mitchell. A couple of ch chances at it, McDonald having to make the save. And, and you know, Dave, like I said we're, we're getting into a pattern where well, there's Phillips, and I'm sure he'll be he'll be feeling bad about not taking the shot there. He's got to at least to get the puck in the corner. Here's the, here's the power play chance as well. Great, Look at that for a move by Campbell. Great by Campbell, and he gets another shot. Uh, Ladislav Kujina making a good save, but we're getting into a pattern where Hall are soaking up the pressure again, and they're coming back. They're getting these scoring opportunities, and again, the longer the game goes like this, it plays right into Rick Strachan's hands. You know Rick Strachan? Fourth game on Sky, four different suits. He's on a good contract. Just over eight minutes then in this middle period. Or will it be a middle period? We may even have overtime tonight. Long stuff. And Rob Wilson said he was looking for a captain's performance and David Longstaff's been on the money here in Hull. Tries to step inside, gets held up by Dave Phillips. Elders intercepts. Phillips has been, been one of the outstanding uh, defensemen for Hull so far. You know what, David? David Phillips hasn't been just for Hull. He's been one of the better defensemen we've oh, seen nice, this yeah. year. Yeah. Well, you know what, and he's, he's doing his job tonight. He's playing real solid, simple hockey. I was fortunate enough to go away with the national team uh, at the end of last season. Very impressed with him. And every time I've seen him this year, he just doesn't make too many mistakes, does he? There's a chance for Riddle takes a shot just past the glove hand of uh, McDonald. Payette's got to get to that loose puck first, and he'll do anything to get to the loose puck first. Has one bite, two bites at it. Riddle's got it, gets it. Another penalty coming against the Newcastle Vipers, a chance for the Stingrays, but Story will collect. And I think we've got a high stick. It's a high stick against Andre Payette and more power play time. It's time for the Stingrays to go on the power play. Once again, and, uh, you know, their last power play, it, it, the, they did have some puck movement, but they didn't have a lot of time to settle things down and, 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 and get some really good scoring opportunities. But for Rick Strack, and I say, for at least it's another couple of minutes that we're not going to have to face a lot of pressure. But what's the trick? How do you get that puck possession? Do you, do, you, do you need a guy to carry it into the offensive zone, or are you going to chip it in and go and get it? completely depends how they how they play, their, how they work their forechecking against you on the, on the penalty kick, whether they not just let you set up, or they might run an aggressive guy through, well, one-man forecheck through the neutral zone. So it depends on on how they work uh, work their penalty kill against you, Dave. Here's Thorma. Face-off win helps, and they got that. The Stingrays, Patterson with a hammer. Hits the pad, the left-hand pad of McDonald. Forces it into the corner. Back to Patterson, nice pass to Thorma. He's got chance in front, takes a shot. Put it in exactly the same spot, exactly the same result. Except Johnson got to this one, but he can't clear the puck. A little bit more urgency about the whole Stingrays with Riddle. And they get it back to Kulikov. Kulikov's going to look for the one-timer from Thormer, is he? No, he's going to take it himself. No, he goes to Thormer on the one-timer. And he tried the stick side this time. And again, same result, padded away by McDonald. Boothroyd couldn't collect it. Sunk a little bit too low there. Story does a nice job, but can't clear either. And it's still with Riddle. Riddle's got Boothroyd one way. Slash comes in, there's going to be another penalty. And we're going to see a five-on-three power play in a minute. And in fact, as soon as Story touches the puck, another penalty against the Newcastle Vipers. So we're going to see five-on-three. And Dave, you know, like you say, it's, uh, you know, how do teams set up? But it's once they've set up in the zone, that's the key. And you, you, you need to string two or three passes together, the puck to settle down for you, um, and to have guys moving and cycling in, into position so that the guy with the puck has all the time at least two outlets. So we see that power play, that's, well, that penalty that has resulted in Story sitting in the penalty box for a hook in minor. So one minute to five on three power play. Ranking, patience is the key here to Phillips, Ladigan, Mitchell, they're your main protagonists. But there's no puck movement, Ladigan with a shot, rebound, big chance out in front, Glover couldn't quite get there. Riddle did his, sorry, Rankin did his best. Here's Mitchell, back to Ladigan. One-timer from Phillips, no, one-timer from Ladigan. Oh, but he got the eight iron out. High wide, almost killed somebody in the eighth row. Phillips goes back door. 
Cox not sitting down. 22 seconds, Phillips. One timer from Ladigan. Glow is just looking for that tip just in front of McDonald's goal. Here's Phillips again, fakes the shot. Goes to Mitchell, Mitchell couldn't get it first time. Back to Ladigan. Ladigan on a one timer for Phillips. Didn't do a good job on it. Ranking, I look to my right, five seconds on the five on three. Back to Ladigan. Phillips, look how low they've sunk. Takes a shot, hits McDonald, whistle blows, just as Newcastle have one player return to the ice. Oh, the Newcastle Vipers there getting away with one. Hull working the puck around nice. You can see they've got the umbrella set up. Phillips, no other outlet except to shoot it. And uh, there, I, I would say... They moved they, the puck very well. They, they did move the puck, but Phillips are guilty of trying to force it. And but, that's why I see you can always move the puck again now. But, but uh, no, one, no one in front of the goal, it's not a high percentage shot. But the players aren't skating, they're not moving, are they? It's only the puck that's moving quick. I don't think there's too much movement in that power play of the uh, of the whole Stingrays. I think if you were watching a Coventry, a Sheffield and Nottingham, the players are skating as well. They're trying to open some lanes up. And I don't think the Stingrays did that there. Five on four power play. And uh, that's going to be over pretty quickly as the whole Stingrays with Riddle take a minor penalty and that will bring us back four and four. When you are five on three though, David, isn't so much, once you've set up, it isn't so much about the players making a lot of, of, of moves. They kind of, they have an area to go to and then it's about moving the puck and trying to pull the triangle out of shape for the one-timers. And that's what didn't happen there is that Phillips, that when he did have the puck, he didn't have those two outlets that I mentioned for the one-timer shot and he let it go into, into McDonald for the rebound and that's where I'd say it, it was wasted. Four on four now then. For 47 seconds until the uh, penalty expires against the Newcastle club. I like four on four. A lot of, lot of ice to skate into. Here's Kulikov. Lovely pass by Kulikov to Boothroyd. Takes a shot through traffic. Patterson had done well getting in front of McDonald. Tried to make the screen. Kulikov's had a better period. He's come to the party. Got a play of his dad's ability, eh? He'd have opened this game up. His dad was a joy to watch, joy to watch. Shields, I'm trying to think of the guy who came across to Fife with his father, and uh, I can't think of his name, but the two of them just played, just played remarkably well together. They were, they were, I was at Solihull at the time, they used to beat us about 18-1. <laughs> One second then has gone, and now the Newcastle Vipers are at full strength. And they are now on the power play for the next 65 seconds. Gomenyuk, Longstaff skates, skates hard as well. But he doesn't get the puck till now. Collects on his backhand, plays on his off wing. Goes around the outside of Thorma. Thorma did a good job, stood him up and stood him up well. Offside will be called, offside is called. If you were scoring, if it was a boxing match, you would score it the whole Stingrays way so far. You'd score it for the Stingrays? Yeah. Yes. I'd score it just for the Vipers on scoring chances. Just for scoring chances. Gets back to Shields. Well played, Andre Payet. Shields passes a bad one to Story. No, I think that Hall have, have uh, come out here and, uh, and put a really big, brave performance. I think, that, like I said, the longer this goes, the more it plays in their favour, and I think they're going to start getting a little bit more confidence back. Here's Shields, hammer. Kushner didn't know too much about it. Came off his blocker. The, power, the recent power plays may have swung it a little bit towards Hull, but I still favour the Vipers in this one. I just think they might have too much, but you keep referring back to these previous games that we've seen, the sponge that is the Hull Stingrays, showing the great character that they have. Longstaff down the right-hand side as the Stingrays are back to full strength. Longstaff just couldn't quite control. Former will come in on him, so will Riddle. But the strength of David Longstaff holds the puck down low. Campbell... That's Derek Campbell, gets it back out to Hutchins. And Hutchins' is pass to Derek Campbell wasn't a great one, and Ladigan will, will come away with it. Long pass from Thorma. We saw so many of those earlier in the season from the uh, Holstein race. No penalty there as Glower went down. And Gomenyuk, who's big and strong, gets it out to Hutchins. He gives it to Campbell. Rublivsky goes to the net as Hutchins takes the shot. And that hit Ooh. Ladigan. And Ladigan's gone down. And Ladigan's already hurt. Yeah. That's, not a, that's not a good sign for the, the Hall Stingrays. Ladigan, he's, he's lost so much ice time tonight so far. And like you did mention, he's probably one of the guys that shouldn't be playing right now with an injury. And he takes that one right in the, right in the midriff. 
The only good thing I'd say about that, at least he never took it in his back, because the back is where the serious problem for Ladigan is. You know what, and, I, he's, and he's bending over okay there. I think I'd rather <laughs> one right in the middle of my spine than where he got it, Dave. <laughs> Two twenty-two, long outlet pass, riddle down the left-hand side. Thormer jumps into the play, hits the blue line, moves the puck forward. Chance for Patterson. Good work by Goulet. He just kept him wide, and Goulet will bang off the boards. And what I see from the Newcastle Vipers is they don't want to play the game in their defensive zone at all. And when they get it, it's coming straight out. Big shot comes in from Kulikov. Johnson collects off Hutchins, goes on the right-hand side to Longstaff. Longstaff waits, moves Phillips out of the way. Tries to centre a pass, but intercepted. Here comes Patterson, three on two if the Stingrays play it well. Kulikov has got Longstaff coming back. Kulikov gets it to Riddle. Riddle couldn't just quite control and get the shot away. Still got possession of the puck. Patterson back to Ladigan. Ladigan, chance out in front, Riddle. Big chance, Jake Riddle. Not to be, and Story will get it and just flick out. Do you see what I mean, Nick? As soon as they get it, doesn't matter, does it? It's coming straight out. They don't mind giving a nice enough as they've just done. No, well, both teams wouldn't. If you, if you if you do have any pressure in your in your zone and you don't have an outlet, your breakout's broken down. The first thing you do is hump it out of the zone. You'll you'll take the icing call there. Riddle just found acres of space look, here look, in front look, of the goal. Look, it just goes to the net. He goes to the net, and and both Newcastle defensemen just stood there watching him. Guilty of letting him. Story's going to be upset with himself again. Always in that position. You've got to make sure your goal side. Here's Ladigan through traffic. Took a deflection off the blocker. But calm play by Story, who's had a big night for the Newcastle Vipers here in Hull. And it's still the Vipers that lead that one goal from Andre Payet. But can it be an equaliser? Hammer comes in from ranking. Newcastle clear. Do they get the puck over the blue line? Only just final minute of the second period. Andre Payet scored inside the first minute, and we haven't had a goal since. Rublivsky steps inside, headmans the puck, tries to centre a pass, but it's intercepted by Mitchell. And I must have to ask why Mitchell it looks all impressive and looks nice as he skates back. But takes, I'm sure Strax want him takes going off. back the other way. You know what? I'm sure he wouldn't. He'll take, take, take the seconds off the clock, get in the, uh, get in the break, get in the intermission, and get some... Uh... Chance for ranking. Tried to find Mitchell. There's a player who hasn't got much confidence right now. Earlier in the season, Rankin would have hammered that one on McDonald. Made the pass instead. Phillips tries to get it back. Only as far as Mitchell. Mitchell can't get too much of it. Joseph jumps onto the ice. Joseph wears five. Long outlet pass. Finds Knight. Longstaff had just stepped across the blue line. And with uh, nine seconds remaining, the whistle blows for offside. So important for the Stingrays, they get put possession. That's why Newcastle have got their number one face-off man, Sean Johnson. He's kicked out of the circle. Rob Wilson below me shakes his head. Hutchins comes in, and Hutchins does a good job. Knight will get there first as a penalty, and it's going to go against the Newcastle Vipers. There's a chance out in front, and there's a chance for the Vipers. Sorry, a chance for the Stingrays, and a penalty for hooking, and it's going to go against Jeff Hutchins with one second left in the second period. Hutchins guilty of the, the hook there but one second to go he's gonna be very very uh, upset with himself because Hull are gonna be starting the third period on the penalty unless he's scoring a second I don't know pull the goalie eh? watch Glower he's got one <laughs> option that's to shoot the puck therefore look at the way Sean Johnson standing to make sure that's not gonna happen and a scoreless second period so only Andre Payet's goal to report in the first period and it's the Holsting Grays nil, the Newcastle Vipers won at the end of the second period. We've still got the third period still to come. Don't go away. Welcome back to the third period. BMI Baby Elite League action here at the Hull Ice Arena. And it's the visitors, the Newcastle Vipers, that lead by a goal to nil. But uh, Hull had the better of that period. 16 did, shots yeah. on McDonald. Yeah, like I said, if it was if it was a, a boxing contest, then, then Hull would have taken that period. But it, it isn't. And they're still 1-0 down. And Dave, every, every time I come up here, I, I want to just tip my hat to the Hull Stingrays because it... They let the first couple of goals in, and sometimes you think, uh-oh, this could be a real whitewash. But they come back, they keep coming at you, keep coming at you. Really brave hockey team. The whole Stingrays don't know when they've beaten, and when they get goaltending from Kudjana, they, they stand a chance in every game that they play. And what Kudjana does when he plays well, he gives his team a chance to win. 
And the uh, Stingray start this third period, of course, on the power play. Nice backhand pass from uh, Glower to Mitchell. Mitchell gets it back to Glower. Rankin makes his way to the front of the net. It's going to come to Toma. Toma through traffic. Uh, Rankin tried a, a redirection as it went through his legs. Glower collects in his glove with 40 seconds off the uh, power play. Through traffic, shot went low, kicked away by McDonald into the corner. Rankin looks for uh, Mitchell, doesn't come to him, and goes all the way down behind the goal. And Mick Strachan waves his hand and tries to get his players to change quickly. They do. Rankin stays out there, and it's still with Rankin. <coughs> Thornton with a slash, no penalty called there. Glower just tried to wait for Ladigan, didn't he? And Ladigan just couldn't get there quick enough. Yeah, and again, you know, but he did have the two options. He had Ladigan, or he could have just cycled it down low in the corner. And it, and that's what these power plays are all about, those those decisions that you make if you try and force the puck. Oh, the Stingray's going to get back into this one. 40 seconds left on the power play. Newcastle clear. And uh, clear over the plexiglass. And then have to go for a change. Puck possession, Thornton. Puck possession with the Vipers. Vipers, when they're five on five, have the better of it. Thornton just tries to rim the puck around. And I think if Rob Wilson can have anything in this period, it will be to play a period Nick five on five. No penalties, no killing penalties, no power plays, just five on five hockey, because I think he thinks his team is better five on five. Here's Elders. Elders doesn't clear, gets a Torma. Now Thornton. But it's just messy at the moment, isn't it? It's no flow to the game. Can Rankin do something? No, he can't. Maybe he can. Here's Rankin gets pulled down. Penalty against the Newcastle Vipers. It's Gomenyuk and Nick, what you call a good penalty. I don't think he had any option but to pull Rankin down. No, and uh, Rob Wilson, <clears throat> I'm, I'm sure, uh, is, is frustrated that he hasn't killed off this game long ago. Um, because it is just a, a bobble like this and, and the Hall could come back and, and tie this game quite easily. And here's the, 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 the force call as well, the penalty, the hook there. He, he, had, to take, uh, he had to take him down. But, and it's Thornton that's gone to the penalty box, not Gomenyuk. So Thornton's gone to the penalty box, so I'm sure that penalty was against Gomenyuk. Rob Wilson's just said to Gomenyuk, sit down, sit down, on the penalty box. And, and now the fans, the whole fans behind us, to the right of us, they're all stood up. And Andy Carson has sent the wrong player to the penalty box, it looks like. Still power play time anyway for the Stingrays to get back in this as uh, shot came in from Ladigan. And Gomenyuk will be back on the ice again in a few seconds' time. David Longstaff laughing as he realises the confusion. So does David, uh, so does Rob Wilson. But here comes Rankin. Shot came in. Goal for the Stingrays! Lee Mitchell with a ripper! We're tied at one! And yet again, the Stingrays soak it up and hammer it back! Well, in the intermission, Dave, we were trying to figure out words for how do you solve a problem like Maria. And, uh, and putting the, the word Hall in, in front of, <laughs> instead of Maria, how do you solve a problem like the Hall Stingrays? They soaked up 40 odd minutes of pressure. And on this power play opportunity, a shot beating McDonald to the short side by Young Mitchell there. And we got a 1-1 game. Hard shot from Mitchell, but McDonald was very slow to react to that. And uh, he'll be bitterly disappointed to find that one in the back of the net. And I'm sure Rob Wilson will be as well. We're tied at one. And yet again, the whole Stingrays come and do it as they do it best. They could go 2-1 here. Oh, what a great stop by McDonald on the one-timer from Mitchell. And all of a sudden, the Stingrays created a ranking down the right-hand side. And look at Strachan behind his bench. Come on, move the puck. And uh, you said maybe McDonald would be disappointed with himself for that, for that goal. But... He made amends for that with another with an amazing save against Mitchell on the two-on-one with a great feed from Gloa. Made himself big. And that's all the goal he can do. Rob Wilson has a word with Story. Puck's going to come back to Boothroyd through traffic. And the Vipers who've struggled with confidence got that early goal. Should have perhaps made it two or three. Didn't. And now the Stingrays are going to come back. Big high stick then on Hutchins. No penalty called. Hutchins has just accidentally high sticked a guy just down low in front. We're going to see that again, maybe. 
but just in front of the Newcastle bench. Hutchins came back to the bench, completely accidental. Now Payette's getting involved, and the stick just tomahawks right on the back of the helmet of Rankin. Great Watch this. But there's the hit. And then, bang, it came down there, right on top of the helmet. Of Completely accidental, but still, it's still a penalty, even when it's accidental. You've got to be in control of your stick no matter what. So the Newcastle Vipers get away with that a little bit. Stingray should be on the power play, they're not. 16 minutes left. We said in the intermission, Nick, as we were queuing for that lovely hot dog of yours, that um, we could be in for overtime and penalty shots here, and we may well be. Where's that crystal ball, Dave? Yeah. <laughs> There's the Vipers down the right-hand side going. It just uh, forces that pass a little bit more. Ben Campbell, and so he uh, comes in and just hammers off, and Thornton loses out. Colin Shields, it was, who uh, delivered the hit. And everything's a bit rushed from the Vipers at the moment. They just need their experienced players, guys like Story, Longstaff, just to, just to slow a game down a little bit. They chip in. Goulet comes off the bench, but here come the Stingrays with Riddle. Down the left-hand side, goes forehand, backhand, forces as well. And uh, just past the glove, nice pass back out. Only as far as Knight, took a weak wrist shot, didn't get anywhere. Oh, the puck just wouldn't settle for him. The Stingrays fans getting behind their team, they're tied at one here. With just less than 15 minutes to go in the third period, will it be a third and final as Joseph gets a tip to negate the icing? Ben Campbell has to be strong on the puck, he is, he gets the puck forward. Misses Sean Johnson out, goes behind Kudrina's goal. Rablitsky tries to get into a corner first, Knight holds him up. Johnson just digging for a puck. Comes out with it as well, Rublitsky has the puck taken off him, it's in to end their third period. Hello, this game's livened up, Mitchell goes to the net. Oh, it was a weak pass by uh, Riddle. Newcastle down the left-hand side with Ben Campbell, this third unit stayed out there a long time. The defensemen have got a change, but Rublitsky gets it back to Gomanyok. Through traffic, hits uh, Joseph right in the knee, and the uh, puck forces into the corner where Johnson tries to get the cycle going with Rublivsky, and the third unit of Rublivsky, Campbell and Johnson has just been out there far too long, and Rob Wilson will want to get them up with some fresh legs on. Hutchins, Chips, Johnson. So smart still, Sean Johnson. Back to Jeff Hutchins. Hutchins has got a stick in him from Ladigan. Ladigan's just hacking and a chopping with Hutchins, two fierce competitors there. Johnson's still out on the ice, so's Rublivsky. He'll be exhausted out there right now. Payette gets a change as Johnson comes up, but Rublivsky's still out there. Hutchins does good work and gives it to Payette, and straight away you can see fresh legs, Payette. A little bit of a, a jump in the step. Andre Payette scored the first goal, gets it back out to Richie Thornton, who couldn't control the pass. Helps it on its way, pressure on those Holstein Rays defensemen right now. Former's just taken a big hit off Payette, and Payette tried to drive to the net. Holstein Rays uh, doing a good job, actually, Dave, that we, we mentioned before. They keep Newcastle, they can have it in their zone, but they're keeping Newcastle out. They're not letting them get into the, into the driving lanes and getting good scoring opportunities. Stingrays will break with Glower. Glower chips into the glove and then runs into Story. Jeff Glower, just a heart soul of the whole Stingrays Hockey Club, a captain, fourth season here. And I, I mentioned in the, in, the, in the first period where we saw guys and they looked a little bit sluggish. And Dave, you can be tired in the first and second periods as long as you don't get whomped on. When you get into the third period and it's close like this, adrenaline kicks in. Phillips, through traffic, gets it into the corner. This game's livened up. Glower loses out, Jackson takes the big hit. And in the second period, Newcastle are clearing the puck out of their uh, defensive zone. Just a little bit smarter, a little bit quicker. Stingrays are forcing them now. They, they've, got a, they've got this second burst of energy. Boothroy gets the puck, chips in. Makes the Newcastle defenseman turn around and exclude energy. And it's a bad pass from Story. Johnson couldn't get on the back of it. Riddle, nice blind backhand pass. pass. Ranking drop pass. Thoma hammers one. Just wide. 
rims all the way around and Boothroyd does a good job but gets caught in his defensive zone then he just gets out of it strong work by Luke Boothroyd top effort by the youngster great top work. effort a great work by the Hall Stingrays forwards you saw Jeff Blowett come back Thomas pinching in on the point but someone's back to cover their position Johnson now chip steps in Johnson hammer off Kudrina's chest only as far as Goulet. Goulet gets it back out to Campbell. Campbell couldn't control. Boothroyd on the backhand chips through the neutral zone. Glower hard on the forecheck, but Newcastle get the puck back in deep behind the goal of Kudrina. Long outlet pass. Finds Riddle, steps inside, plays down the middle, still Riddle. Not good enough though to uh, skate all the way through the Newcastle team. I thought Kulikov was going to. Gominyuk just runs over Glower. Here's Riddle again, strong on the puck. Still got it, Glover then takes a shot right into the glove of McDonald. Uh, yeah, I, I was mentioning earlier on, Dave, how, how this game could go. Look at uh, Toma, he's a defenseman coming in, get, getting the shot away, missing by a few inches, and it comes back the other way. But what Hull did was blow up, pick, uh, came back, he, he saw, he read the play, he saw his defenseman coming in, he comes back, and, and I said it was going to be who helps out their defenseman more that could take this game. I'm sure Boy Stormer would just love that effort, uh, that shot back again. He had the whole uh, left-hand side of the net open to shoot at when you saw that replay. Patterson chips in, Hutchins is playing hurt, as we've said. Mitchell. Hutchins playing on defence at the moment, or just in the defensive duties. Now Gominyuk's back in position. Here's Slava Kulikov, leaves it for Mitchell. Now Patterson, Payette will finish, he pushes hard into these heavy boards. That's exactly what Gominyuk could do, he'll kick it out as well, and Longstaff makes no mistake clearing through the neutral zone. Rick Strachan's got to be happy with his young British guys, how they stepped up, Phillips, and especially Mitchell, playing out there on the left wing. And it was Phillips that chips in. Mitchell and Phillips have been outstanding every time we've seen them, haven't they? They have, yeah. Credit, the pair of them. Action down the other side now, where, where Campbell is involved in a hack and a chop down there with Dave Phillips, and it's going to be Campbell on a holding minor. And Dave Phillips has just got under the skin of Derek Campbell. And we'll see Campbell making his way to the penalty box. And more power play time to the whole sting, guys. Watch this. You see Campbell keeping his feet going, and, and it's a definite call. I mean, obviously, you, you want to play aggressive on the far check and get around a guy who's not moving as fast as you did. But Phillips does a good job getting goal side, getting his body in the way, forcing Campbell, who's got a lot of speed and a lot of momentum, to pull him down. You know what? When your team are struggling as Newcastle are, when you've scored the first goal and then the Stingrays have come in, the last thing you want to do is take a stupid penalty. That's a frustration penalty, and that's a dumb penalty that Derry Campbell's taken there. And right inside, I think Rob Wilson would like to shoot him. I know Willie, and Willie would just think, why did you do that? There was no reason to do that. Why? And he's put his team in trouble I now. Don't, I don't know if he'd want to shoot him. but uh, Trust me, he'd want to shoot him right now. <laughs> and if the whole Stingrays score on this power play, I don't think Derry Campbell will really be too keen coming back to the, that long skate across the ice to the bench. He'll have to get a cab back to, to Newcastle. Oh, maybe. and uh, Knight just found out. Sorry, yeah, Riddle just found on one there. And uh, the Vipers looking to... Oh, we've had more excitement in the first 10 minutes of this third period than we did in the previous 40, which really come to life. This guy's had a good game. Riddle skates, end of the ring to end of the ring, on his backhand side. Riddle holds onto the puck. Now he's going to try and feed, and they set up the Stingrays. They've got a one-man advantage. Move the puck and move your legs. Get your feet moving. Try and create some space. Find the gap. Longstaff's going to come hard in on Ladigan. Kulikov couldn't make it. Goulet with a hard rim, and it gets all the way out, and it goes through the neutral zone. Both coaches wave their players. Wave their players back to the bench. Old Thomas put himself into trouble there. He had an easy outlet pass, but Jackson skated hard at him on the forecheck 40 seconds remain then on the power play here it is for the whole stingrays 1-1 in the game power play time with Rankin outlet pass Mitchell takes a shot just goes wide second chance for Phillips Phillips hard off the board Rankin collects Rankin gets taken in by Gominyuk Gominyuk hard out Shields helps it all the way great route by, by Rankin when you're tired you don't have a lot of legs you tend to on a power play you tend to 
to go high and you don't give your defenseman any outlets. Rankin came all the way back. He gave his defenseman an outlet and they got a good scoring chance. Big hit came in from Johnson. Story gets it and clears all the way down. And that will see the end of the power play time for the whole Sting race. And Derek Campbell will be a relieved man as he enters the uh, as he enters the auditorium once more. Derek Campbell, who's had some great games on Sky Sports this year for the uh, Newcastle club. But, uh, he's going to have another one now. He's got eight minutes to uh, try and force a winner for the Vipers. They desperately need two points. Shot comes in from Rankin. Story collects. Story's got a little bit of time to get it to Derek Campbell. Derek Campbell just moves the puck out of the defensive zone. Keeps it on the wall. Story is looking for an option there. You saw him look for an option. Campbell tried to get him behind the back of Boothroyd. Payette finishes. Here's a chance for Riddle. Great play by Riddle. Penalty coming in on uh, as Riddle was taken down. What a nice move, Riddle. He's, mo he's made more what I would call silky moves in the last 10 minutes. Look at this for a move. I think he's taken down. He does, he gets taken down, but um, I, I have to again go back to, to the young Brett again, Knight in the, taking the hit in the neutral zone from Payette, but making sure he plays the puck. Good, strong, basic hockey by the, the Hall Stingrays, limiting themselves to mistakes, and they're getting the scoring opportunities, and they're on another power play. The Hull Stingrays were the sponge of the first half of this game. They soaked it up, and in the second half, it's the Vipers that's now soaking it up. And it's because they're giving away penalties. That was a good penalty. They had to give that penalty away. And they're, they're, you know what they're doing? They're taking the hits, and they've, they've got a little smile on their face after they take the hit to say, come on, guys, we'll take it all night, and we'll give it back. The Vipers are working hard. They're giving everything they've got here. They've taken a couple of penalties recently, and it's power play time. Eventually, that will count. Here's Toma. Toma leaves it for Patterson. Nice play by Toma and Patterson. Toma gets a shot away. And uh, McDonald got down to that. He had a second nervous look, didn't he? This is a real, real testy time for the Newcastle Vipers right now. You, as you said at, at the top of the game, you know, they, they've got two wins in the last nine or two in the last 11. Two in the last 11. And, and two in the last 11. And they're, as you mentioned to me earlier, they're a team that are used to winning. They haven't been in this position where they've got to rescue their season. And it's going to be a real test of, of character from the Newcastle Vipers because right now they, they want to take a lesson from this guy and see the character that Hall are displaying. You open the show with the word desperate and I think in the next eight minutes, six minutes, these teams have got to play desperate hockey, whatever it takes. That's only That means <laughs> blocking shots or? Someone gave me a bet to see that word. Is that right? I, I get a pound every time <laughs> I say it. Here's Lee Mitchell, he got the equalizing goal. Great skating from Mitchell, heads up play, finds Lanigan. 65 seconds on the power play. Gets it back to Thoma. Thoma. Thoma on a one-timer maybe to Ladigan. No, Ladigan holds on to it. Back to Thoma. They're looking for puck movement. Rankin's the man. Thoma takes a shot. Rebound out front. Glower at the second bite of the cherry forced wide. Gomanyok just hammers all the way down. And Glower was waiting. Any kind of rebound, Glower was there. 40 seconds left on the power play for the Stingrays. Do they twist or bust? Here comes Riddle. He likes that forehand backhand move, Riddle, doesn't he? I like that chewing the gum shield as well. He eh? doesn't yeah. even have it yeah. in his mouth. Ladigan. Don't spend too much time on the puck, son. There you go. Give it to Phillips. Phillips headmans the puck, brings it forward, chips into the corner. Riddle will do one thing, and that's go and get it first. Big and strong, and he gets it back to Toma with 10 seconds left on the power play. Riddle can't control, and Newcastle will have a chance to clear, and they'll clear two on two as their team come back on full strength. In fact, they go for a change, and Jackson holds on to it, and then just chips into the corner. He comes for a change as well. Goulet comes straight out of the penalty box for it, uh, straight onto the bench. Doesn't go out there. We're going to enter the final five minutes. Are we going into overtime again here in Newcastle, in, uh, in Hull? Thornton gets to a loose puck, hammers off the board, through the neutral zone. Collected by Boothroyd. Look at Hutchins work hard, just trying to stop that pass the other end. And if icing is called, which it won't be because McDonald's come out of his crease, Jeff Hutchins did a great job, for an injured man, did a great job there. All off the puck, all probably off camera, but did a great job for his team. Longstaff, strong as an ox, gives it to Hutchins. Hutchins will surely drop it to Longstaff. No, he takes a shot. Did he pick up on his own rebound? No, Longstaff couldn't either. It's down the other end. Riddle, will he drop it to Joseph or will he take the shot himself? 
It's still Riddle. Holds on to the puck. Oh, and now he loses it. Perhaps it would have been better to keep the cycle going there. Ladigan chips in, collected by Hutchins. And where do the minutes go? It's now back to Payet. Four minutes remain in this game. We're just a handful of seconds over. Ladigan hard off the glass and out. Only as far as Story on the red line. Bang, it goes straight back in. Behind the goal of uh, Kudjana, collected by Phillips. He's recovered from that uh, incident with Campbell. And look how well he skates. Control of the puck as well. Great play by Phillips. Out to Patterson, who takes a shot. It gets deflected. And it goes over right by the hot dog stand. And a whistle blows. A hot dog stand? Is that what you called them, or is it...? <laughs> Well, that's what the hot dog stand was. Huh? That's where the hot dog stand was. It's a, it's a hot dog cafeteria now. Is that right? Well, use of the word hot dog is a, is a dodgy one, isn't it? Because we saw the quality of what came out of there. 3.50 to go, folks. Third period. We're tied at one here at the Hull Ice Arena. It was Andre Payet for the Vipers in the first minute on the power play to give the Vipers the lead. And then Lee Mitchell with our bullet past McDonald for 1-1. And they're hacking and chopping two teams playing desperate hockey. These teams haven't got many wins in recent weeks. They're desperate for a win here. First of all, though, they've got to be desperate not to lose the game. Remember, if it finishes 1-1, both teams get a point, and into overtime we go. And you can't lose that point once you've got it. Overtime or a penalty shot winner will, of course, uh, get the extra point. Rob Wilson's just moved Hutchins from the right-hand side over to the left-hand side. He was quite persistent that uh, Hutchins went onto the other side. Is that a set play that the uh, the Vipers are working on? Yes, it was because Hutchins got it back. He was playing on his onside and he got it back to Goulet for the one-timer. Back down the other end and a chance in front of McDonald's goal. Hutchins gets to a corner first. I think Hutchins has had a good game tonight for the Vipers, but it's still with Mitchell and he just couldn't quite get it out to Glower. Oh, he was close then. Final three minutes. Are we going to see a winner in regulation, Nick? What do you think? Oh, I don't know, Dave, but it, it could come from uh, from an unsung hero. We've had a goal already from this guy, Lee Mitchell, and uh, he's going to be our player of the game. I think he's had a great game, hasn't yeah, he? Awesome game. Skated well. I know he's got the goal, but he skated well. He's been first into corners, first on loose pucks, and he scored an all-important goal. And you ask if um, if I think there's going to be a goal. If there is a goal, it's going to come. It's going to be an ugly one. Well, you're full of predictions, you are, aren't you? I really stick my neck <laughs> on the line, don't oh, I? Oh, crikey. Dave, what do you think? I think it'll stay 2-2. Two, two. I think it'll stay 1-1. One, one. See, the thing is, you're yeah. just guessing. No, I'm not. Yeah, I'm you guessing. Are. I think it'll stay 1-1. One, one. I, I think this is a game for penalty shots. I really do. Here's Kulikov. Skates well. Watch Riddle score now. Here's Riddle. Out to Kulikov. Kulikov couldn't get there. Gomin, you've got his stick to it just in time. Campbell now comes back three on three. Campbell has got to Jackson just in front of him. Jackson's going to get a bit of it, is he? No. Not to Kulikov. No penalty called there on a hold. Back comes Riddle. Riddle forces. Makes the backhand play. Rob Wilson's going crazy down beneath us. He's obviously, uh, he's obviously seen something, but a chance for Glower! Great stop, McDonald! Glower jumped into the hole, and there was a lane, and he found it, and he made a great one-timer. And McDonald just got down and got his blocker up. It's going to be the Stingrays who finished this game on top. High stick from Story, and the Newcastle Vipers will find themselves in a penalty box again. And Story thinks Ladigan might have made a meal of that. We'll have to wait and see. But for the last 142 of this third period, it's Stingray's power play. And it's all from the Hall Stingrays, just buzzing and buzzing and buzzing. There's the high stick, no argument from Story. Even though he tried, it was a high stick and call, but Glow with a great opportunity to give the two points to the Hall Stingrays. And McDonald just standing up with a blocker, making an absolutely amazing save. Can the Stingrays on this power play, Nick? Are you going to make a prediction? Are you, are you going to suggest that the Stingrays could win this? Oh, Dave. Oh, I still think it's going to go into of OT. they could win it. Yeah, they could win it. I think it's going into OT. Here's Phillips. Rims the puck. Glower helps it on its way. Where's Rankin? Rankin can't quite get there. Good play by Gomenyuk. There's not too many times that Gomenyuk goes into a corner and doesn't come out with it. Not tonight, anyway. Here's Ladigan. 
They'll try and play back to him on the top, on the power play, once they get put possession. Mitchell will try and get it back, really. No, it's Glower. Glower instead goes to... Winter Phillips and right on the back door then was Rankin who just had his feet taken away from him final minute folks final minute and it's all power play time it's going to go back to Phillips I think he's got to come to Lanigan Mitchell now Glower Glower's going to turn on a sixpence gets it back to Phillips Lanigan wants it but they're just leaving him out why would you leave him out they should have just got the puck across to him and 40 seconds left Big hit from Phillips. That's how you want it. Oh, in the game. rattled the teeth, and Jackson felt that. In fact, Jackson's mother felt that, and she lives 6,000 miles away. And you know what? And Jackson is playing hurt as well. 20 seconds remain in this one, and Gomenyuk clears. Last chance, maybe. 15 seconds on the period. Chance to win it. Chance for a hero. Not going to happen. Goulet forces into the corner. Gominyuk's got to be there first. Five seconds. Last chance for Thoma. Throws one out in front. And the hooter blows as Ladigan takes the shot. And it's finished. 1-1. Both teams take a point out of this one. Payet's goal to start it off with. And then Lee Mitchell in the third period for an equaliser. We're going into overtime. Maybe even penalty shots. So here we go, folks. Andy Carson drops the puck in for another 15 seconds. The whole Stingrays find themselves on a four-on-three power play. Remember, the five-minute sudden death four on uh, um, sudden death overtime. Get me teeth in. Is four on four. But of course, with that penalty that's just expired, it's four on three. Gomenyuk comes back. But story on the ice with Goulet. Is someone going to score, Dave? Yeah, I think somebody will. No, I don't. I think this will go to penalty shots. I actually want penalty shots. I like penalty shots. So you so say you've covered both angles then, eh? Yeah, no, no. Nobody will score. <laughs> okay. It'll be frenetic, but he won't score. Here's Goulet. 422 then. Who does over I'm just trying to work out who overtime fancies better, who skates better of these teams, and perhaps when the Jackson Shields line is out there, then maybe they'll enjoy four on four. I think a healthy Jackson would like this, but he took a huge hit there at the end of the of regulation time and we know he's a guy who came into this game with an injury so both teams take a point to their league schedule if any team scores in overtime they get that extra additional point and if they don't score in the next 341 we go to a penalty shootout three shooters from each team first round is like on an aggregate score and then we go to sudden death here's david longstaff the captain of the newcastle vipers Heads up play, makes a smart pass to Campbell, to Gomenyuk. I wonder if either of these teams would actually take penalty shots right now. They fancy themselves in penalty shots more than four on four. Story just walks around Boothroyd. And offside, and Story, who've made such a nice play, he'll be so frustrated that his uh, forwards just uh, went into the offensive zone too soon then. Campbell now in the face-off circle, tries to move the puck forward. Blower got there first. And got it back to Toma. 3.07 remained in sudden death overtime. Anybody scores now, it's over. And the fat lady will be singing. Here's Toma, just fires one into McDonald. And McDonald just gets to that and uh, goes down and covers. Or just yelling really loud, right? Really? Yeah. It's a Michelle McManus moment. Who wants it more? Who's prepared to give that little bit extra? Have you got any more you can give? Look at the grimace on Glower's face. He's prepared to give it all. Glower helps it on its way. Out in front to Riddle. Riddle with a wraparound. And a Viper got his stick to it first. Heads up play. Nice, smart. Heads up play by Colin Shields. Blue line. Takes a wrist shot into the glove of uh, Ladigan down the other end. Down the, uh, sorry, Kudgen out the other end. Whistle blows. Ladigan, who hadn't skated for uh, 10 days until this morning. And he's played every second shift and probably put in 35 minutes tonight. It's taken down hard there by David Longstaff. Look at Longstaff working as he's trying to get back there. He's made one hit and he's chasing Phillips. And he's back there and he's ahead of him and finishes him into the boards. That's a captain saying, guys, we're not going to lose this what game. Captain does. Yeah. Sean Johnson's got Shields just ahead of him. No offside there. Shields falls over. Sorry, Johnson falls over himself as Phillips 
And Phillips can skate for fun as well. He's just worked so hard tonight. Still got plenty left in his tank. You have to be superly impressed with the fitness of these guys, not just the sheer strength of them, but the actual fitness of them. They are superhuman efforts out here. Third game in five days for all of these players. And when you talk about Rafa Benitez and his rotation, where he doesn't want his players playing, you know, two games in ten days, sometimes you, uh, you have to shake your head. These guys give it all. Jackson with a shot from the outside, gets kicked away. The luxury of a rotation policy, there's a oh, pick there, right. and the pick from Brad Patterson. Interference call being called by Andy Carson, and for the last 80 seconds of this game, we're going to see Newcastle Vipers power play time, and Carson had to call it. Yeah, you see the drive from behind the net there, and Patterson just not doing anything to get out of the way, and that is interference with no tolerance. See, he does stand up, he knows exactly what he's doing there in front of Jackson and uh, a two-minute minor four interference right in front of Andy Carson. Is there a hero in the Newcastle Vipers? Is it Hutchins, Longstaff? Is it Story or is it Shields? Those are the four against Riddle, Rankin and Toma of the Stingrays. A hundred... I was going to say 100 seconds, 66 seconds, sorry, Story, I'm getting tired, Story gets it out to Hutchins, Toma goes in there to collect, Hutchins sacrifices that injured body and gets it back to Story, Story steps inside, <coughs> Shields, back to Story, looking for the one-timer maybe, Shields just bounces and bobbles for him, back to Longstaff, looks for Story, Story gets it, Ben Story, Hutchins, they're tired passage right now, Shields, Longstaff, David Longstaff steps inside and fires one. And uh, Kudjana just covered as much of the net as he could. He, made, he Not only did he make the great save, but earlier on he got a piece of a pass that was fed from behind the goal just to disrupt the Newcastle Vipers power play. A melee at centre ice and Hutchins it is who feeds it down the left-hand side to Longstaff. Longstaff on a drop pass. Here's Story. Story to win. It shoots and it just hits the netting over the back of the plexiglass. Taking a deflection. And the all Stingrays breathe a sign of relief. Story with a great call there um, to his teammate, to Longstaff, I think it was, as uh, as he gained the zone. Story, he's had his head really in the game all game, and, and uh, he gets a scoring opportunity. It takes a deflection, go into the netting, and Rob Wilson uh, has to wait another 12 seconds. Oh, to be a coach. Look at him. <laughs> Both coaches, anxious, tense, nervous, headache. It's an anodyne moment. Ten seconds left in this one. And Mitchell does the smart thing and just uh, knocks the puck down the ice. This one's over, folks. This one's going into penalty shots. Unless uh, Ladigan can do something remarkable, which he can't. 1-0 to the Newcastle Vipers at the end of the first period. It was still 1-0 at the end of the second. But Lee Mitchell's goal has tied it at one. A scoreless overtime session. We are going into a penalty shootout. Hutchins versus Kudrina. Hutchins, who top scored in his first year in Britain for commentary, top scored in his second year for Belfast. He's an injured man, he's going under the knife soon. Can he score? No, he can't, he shoots. And he just shot wide, glove side, on Kudjana. But Dave, I always say the smart money is on the guy who shoots the puck. We know, we've said it many, many times, everyone does know it. The ice gets snowy and cut up after 25 minutes without it having a chance to get cut, so you gotta shoot. We saw the whole Stingrays lose a penalty shootout to the Belfast Giants the last time we were here. Rankin wasn't shooting that night. He's shooting tonight. Rankin versus McDonald. Rankin takes the shots, denied. McDonald makes a save. Made it look fairly regulation as well. Yeah, Rankin coming in and uh, straight beeline, straight for the goal. You quickly have a look, see where you're going to shoot it, let it go, no hesitation, but McDonald makes a save. This boy can finish one-on-one, -on -one. Todd Jackson. First game back in the lineup for the Vipers tonight. Following an injury, right-handed shot. He'll come with speed. Right down the middle, Jackson versus Kudrina. Kudrina denies! Could be a long night. Jackson with some great moves, but Kudrina just doing the splits. and Look at the quick hands on Jackson, makes a move, makes Kudrina go down, but you wonder if he could have just taken a little wider and gone up high. 
Here is Riddle. He's had a great second half to this game. Riddle versus McDonald. Riddle shoots high just over the crossbar. Riddle coming in, and, and Dave, you bet these guys do have moves. They practice this stuff. And he, I imagine, likes to go high for the cookie jar, but uh, he misses the net. Colin Shields, the next shooter. This is pretty much sudden death now in his first round. Shields versus Kujina. Shields deeps, goes 5 all. Kujina sat back and denies. Shields with more or less the same little deep that uh, Jackson does, just does a little shimmy, makes Kujina go down. But again, you, you wonder if he could have gone a little bit further and gone up high. If Jeff Glower, the captain of the Hall Stingray, scores this goal, it's all over. Glower versus McDonald. Glower to win it. Glower doesn't win it. I gave him the big build-up as well, and he didn't win it. And again, a fairly regulation save by McDonald, who, who covered well. Glower comes down. He goes head down so he doesn't let McDonald read his eyes. And then he pops him up, tries to go uh, with a nice little deke, but McDonald moves and shuts the door on the short side. Second round of penalty shots. It's sudden death now, folks. Hutchins comes at a different angle. Hutchins versus Kujina. Oh, I saw what he was trying to do. Chip it over him, and he couldn't do it. Yeah, Hutchins thinking, guys, we kind of done everything by the book so far on the last six penalty shots for both teams. So he goes out wide, does a little toe drag, and uh, loses a handle of the puck. Sudden death, Rankin to win it for the Stingrays. Rankin shoots, denied. McDonald, great love by Ryan McDonald. Quick love as well. What a great save, even uh, Rick Strachan recognizes this. That's going in. But he comes up with the trapper and shuts <laughs> shuts it out. You spilling on yourself? You dribbling? Jackson, I'm excited. This is what hockey's all about, excitement. This is what you get when you go to an elite league ring. Jackson, Jackson versus Kojina, and Jackson goes for and backhand, and Jackson scores for the Vipers. What a great goal. And, uh, Going against what I said anyway earlier on, but he pulls a nice little deep this time to the backhand. Kujina gets so deep. Riddle has to score. If Riddle doesn't score, Newcastle win. Riddle must score. Riddle versus McDonald. Riddle shoots. McDonald saves, and the Newcastle Vipers beat the Holston Grays in a penalty shootout. The happy Vipers fans who've made the trip down from Newcastle will go home the happier team. Well, a 1-0 first period for the Newcastle Vipers, a scoreless middle session, and then the Stingrays came back to tie it at one. We went through a scoreless overtime period and then to penalty shots. It took the second round before Todd Jackson would win it, and it's the Vipers that beat the Stingrays 2-1. Welcome back, folks, to the BMI Baby Elite Ice Hockey League, where the Newcastle Vipers have pipped the Hull Stingrays 2-1 to one after overtime and on penalty shots. Well, folks, at the beginning of this game, we talked about two teams who really needed a win, and they split the honours, but Newcastle got that very extra added point after the overtime and on the shootout and Dave Sims how much does that mean to the Newcastle Vipers? Well you and I were just talking Nick and yes it's an extra point in the standings and that's all very well and good but more important than that it's the confidence the momentum that a win gives you on the scoreboard and you know I've just been inside the Newcastle dr uh, Vipers dressing room yep. and you would have just thought they won game seven there high-fiving <laughs> each other the beer cans are open there's a bit of uh, fragility and there hasn't been a lot of that you know the uh, Newcastle Vipers haven't won for a long time so very important all right Dave well Newcastle came out really really quick on the power play Andre Payette getting them on the board big shot from uh, Story you see Story shot there Andre just getting a tip in on it that's what he's there for he's big he's strong he's in front of the net he's trying to obscure the view and that's exactly what he does one last look at it I would have thought here Story bullet Kujina can't see it, especially with uh, the big backside of Andre Payet. After scoring the sec uh, second period, uh, Hall managed to tie it back. Absolute bully by Lee Mitchell. <laughs> Absolute crackerjack of a goal. Lovely feed by Rankin as yeah. well, but then bang. And I, I think you'll see from this angle here, 
I don't think McDonald was expecting that shot at yeah, all. Yeah. And I think McDonald would be very disappointed that he let that goal in. But he did make amends on the two-on-one and ultimately in the penalty oh, shootout. He, he made lots of amends. He made lots of big saves tonight. But I think if they'd have gone home having lost this game, he would have been pretty quiet on the bus. There was a, a shot in the first period that we were all looking at each other. We were, did uh, it, didn't we? It, it, did it go in, did it go in? But we obviously see this uh, Payette with a big ripper off the post. It didn't make the ching noise, did it, off the no, crossbar? And that's what confused us, wasn't it? We honestly thought that he might have hit the back uh, stanchion. Andre again through traffic and he went over Kujini. You saw Kujini just get out of the way of it. But yeah. in the first period interval, we must have watched it 20 times before we realised that. Of course, that. the angle that it came out in, it was, it, yeah. and uh, Andy, Andy Carson did get it right there. But, but uh, it was a much better game than perhaps you and I thought it was going to be before the start of the night. It, uh, it was two desperate teams, and you're right, they played desperate hockey, and Newcastle would just be relieved they got out with the two points. But Hall have got to be happy with it. Have to be happy with yep. it. You know, I thought they got a great performance tonight out of uh, Riddle. I thought they got a great performance tonight out of Mitchell. They got good goaltending again for the second night running out of, uh, out of Kudger. Yeah. And, uh, you know, fortunately, Ladigan played the whole 60 minutes, and he's so important to them. All right, Dave. Well, earlier on, you caught up with both head coaches. Here's what they had to say. That one, Ricky, could have gone either way. Yeah, you know, I thought it was, I thought it was an outstanding hockey game. Uh, you know, a great effort put, put out by both teams. Uh, you know, some great goaltending, what we said was going to be important. Uh, you know, uh, I was a little worried after they scored the first one really early in the game, but you know the guys the, the guys weathered the storm by Newcastle, and as the game went got, you know went on, I think we got a little bit stronger and stronger, and, and we created some more scoring chances. And and then uh, in the third period, I thought you know we, we played very well, and and their goalie just you know he made some he kept them in the game, and you know we had some power plays, and then of course they went to overtime, and then uh, the shootouts, and uh, we didn't score. <laughs> what did you do different in the second period? What what changed it around for you? I, I just I just told the guys you know what just keep getting the puck deep and been putting pressure on them and keep getting the deep you know what it, it, it's not rocket science you know the whole ho game of hockey is get the puck in the offensive zone and put some pressure on them and, and you know what and I, and I thought those guys uh, they responded very well and and we started moving the puck a little quicker and and we got uh, we got we you know what we, we made them take penalties. Congratulations, Rob. But perhaps you should have had that one maybe a little earlier. Well, you know what? Right now I'm just happy we got the win. But um, full credit to Hull. I thought they came back after the first period, which is a period that I thought we dominated. I thought we played as strong as we played for a long time. We're playing as a team, playing our systems. Then we came out in the second period and decided, you know, well, we'll, we'll try different things. And guys try to be individuals again. And that's what keeps continually get us in trouble. And then we let Hull back in the game. And uh, you know what? Full credit to them. They, uh, they deserve something out of it and they got something. We saw lots of uh, close-ups on you tonight. The stress of being a coach behind the bench, uh, just uh, anguish at times. I'm only 18, David, and uh, you know it's been a tough, it's been a tough road. But uh, no, you know what? Yeah, you, you, any time when you're desperate for a win, and we were desperate for a win tonight, you know you're stressed and things you know get more frustrated than maybe you normally would when when things are going well. But uh, you know I'm, I'm an emotional guy, and people know that, and um, you know my players know that. But I feel that uh, you know, like I said, if we had played, finished things a little bit better in the first, we shouldn't allow them back in. But their goalie played strong, and we should have continued the way we had it in the second period, uh, you know, from the first to the second. But we didn't, and we allowed them into it. So, okay, congratulations, everyone. Anyway. Thanks. And the league table will now look like this heading into the weekend. Coventry still on top, and uh, Newcastle with that uh, that value value point is going to mean a lot. It will mean a lot, and also that one point for the whole Stingrays. They get them one point closer uh, to the Basingstoke Bison. Remember, eighth place yeah. is the final playoff spot. Well, heading into the weekend, folks, these are the games coming your way. So if you're in any of these areas, go have a look and uh, see some great hockey. Well, you know that Cardiff-Newcastle game in that small rink, big game. All right, Dave, so uh, we've seen another great classic game of hockey in Hull. Well, we have, you know, we've seen a lot of different not games. Not classically pretty, but Not classic. classically pretty, but it was a desperate game, and hockey sometimes can be a desperate game. That's why we love it. You know, it's nice to see all the skillful pass, the end-to-end, -end, and the big teams playing that stuff. But you know what? Tonight we saw a lot of determined uh, hockey players who, who were playing hurt, playing injured, and they were prepared to put their bodies on the line. Congratulations yeah. to them all. That's what I enjoyed so much, is seeing guys really dig deep and leaving it all out there. Well, Ladigan with a bad back, and he's diving in front of pucks. 
Hawks, you know, Hutchins who goes in for an operation, he's booked in for it. He's been playing injured for four weeks. I thought Hutchins was outstanding tonight, did the little things right. So um, you have to take your hat off. You know, lots of hockey fans at the moment, you know, fingers on keyboards on hockey forums, criticising players in all the teams. I tell you what, I don't know a tougher, harder group of guys than all the hockey players in the BMI Baby Elite League. And I'll take my hat off to them all. And the guys typing should stop typing and uh, get behind the players. That's right. Well, we've got more hockey coming your way here on Sky Sports. Next one up, it's going to be the Basingstoke Bison against the high-flying Coventry Blaze down in Basingstoke, 5 p.m. on Sky Sports Extra. Dave, thanks ever so much for joining us. My pleasure, Nick. Looking forward to Basingstoke. Bring the spare pair of socks. <laughs> All right. And thank you for joining us here on Sky Sports. We'll see you next time.